Hello everyone and welcome. I am at the launch of the 2017 Kia Sportage in beautiful sunny San Diego. Uh, they've got a music theme to this so you'll notice I'm wearing a shirt with Matt's face on it of Matt and Kim. And I'm here with Nick Miles of Fox Sports or Test Miles. Uh, Nick does a lot of automotive journalism events. He's at these things way more often than I am. Um, not nearly as excited I guess these days, huh? Well, I'm excited for <laughs> Kia and the new Sportage. Yeah, yeah, this has been cool to test out. So the one we are in uh, is the 2-liter turbocharged all-wheel drive. Uh, there's also a 2.4 liter and you can also get it with front wheel drive. Uh, so the 2 liter is about 240 horsepower. The 2.4 liter uh, without the turbocharger naturally aspirated inline four, that one is about 180 horsepower. Now as far as the interior, I'm 6'1". I've got plenty of leg room here and there's a lot of adjustment uh, in the seat. I also sat in the back uh, just behind this with my seat adjusted how I have it and I've got plenty of leg room in the rear seat. So you can fit, you know, four adults in here very comfortably and you've also got a good amount of cargo space in the back. As far as visibility, looking out the front, it's somewhat narrow of a windshield, but overall it's pretty good. You're fairly close to it. Uh, out the rear is a little bit different. It's a little bit more cramped up in the back. Looking to the sides is fine and checking your blind spot, you've got plenty of visibility to the sides. So as far as the infotainment system, they now do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we've hooked up uh, Nick's massive phone. I can't really handle something this large. Yeah, clearly I've heard that before. <laughs> so, but anyways, you can plug that in uh, and you can get your apps uh, right there on the screen and use it as a touch screen. Um, you can zoom in and things like that, swipe the screen. Uh, so it has normal features. Um, you've been using it. How has it been uh, while, you've, while you've got it plugged in there? Well, I have to say I don't usually use Android Auto in my vehicle, so my, my newer vehicle vehicle at home doesn't have it um, so I had to install it first of all and go through all the options and okay uh, that was a that was about a 10 minute <laughs> it's not as easy <laughs> as plug and play yeah uh, at least the first time it isn't and I've unplugged it and plugged it in several other times and it's it's not quite a plug and play it's a plug a few steps and play okay and we also had to for the first time we had to have the parking brake on right. I believe in order to get it active um, which a small difference, but like with the, the Apple CarPlay's, which I've used, and this has it, you literally just connect it, you accept on your phone, and then from then on out, um, it's done. So a uh, slight difference in how they connect, but the apps have seemed to work fine once we pulled it up. I think the biggest difference is uh, using Android Auto and, and uh, Apple CarPlay is, the biggest difference is uh, Apple is much better with the music mm -hmm. and the entertainment, but Android is much better with the maps and directions. Oh yeah, I would you know, I would agree. You know, using the Android Auto voice activated, so if I can say, um, you know, hey Google, take me to the zoo, it'll automatically work out where I am and take me to San Diego Zoo. Yeah. Um, so it's very intuitive. Right. Whereas Apple's a little bit like, you know, um, please see the FBI to get your phone locked. <laughs> <laughs> you had to slip that in there, yeah, huh? Yeah, of course. I don't want my uh, encryption uh, intruded on, so uh, I, I'm okay with it. I would either with the stuff you have on your phone. <laughs> Now, one of the disadvantages of this car is the fuel economy. It really doesn't have a strong story there. The one we are in with the two liter and all wheel drive, 20 in the city, 23 on the highway. Um, so comparing that to some of the other all wheel drive models out there, like the Mazda CX-5, uh, the Ford Escape, uh, the Subaru Forester, you're gonna get much better fuel economy in those other vehicles. Uh, if you do go down to the front wheel drive, with the 2.4 liter, uh, it is capable of 30 on the highway, but still like the Subaru Forester in its base trim with all wheel drive is returning 32. So the fuel economy isn't a really strong story. Now, as far as the all wheel drive system, they've actually done some pretty cool, unique things with it. Uh, there's a clutch pack that hooks up to the rear. And so you can basically, they're saying uh, that they can have 100% of the power sent to the front or sent to the rear. So that rear clutch pack capable of completely locking up so that you can send all the torque to the axle, which has the most grip. Now from side to side, these do have open differentials in the front and the rear. Uh, so the right to left split is going to be done with the brakes. Um, so, you know, if you're coming into a corner and one side uh, starts to slip, it'll apply the, uh, the brakes to that side uh, so that you can send more torque to the wheel, which does have traction. 
Now this has a six speed transmission and you can put it over into manual shifting. Uh, the response isn't super quick, but it is smooth to shift gears. Um, actually really smooth downshifting there. Uh, so, you know, a somewhat of a delay as is typical with planetary automatic gearboxes, but uh, it's actually really smooth to shift between gears. So I do like it for the most part. And you know, it gives you that control if you're going down a steep hill or whatever. Uh, so you can use engine braking rather than the brakes themselves. The car is fairly heavy, uh, about 36 pounds I believe with the uh, all-wheel drive system which adds about 300 pounds so a fairly heavy all-wheel drive system if you do tick that box and I think that's a big part of why you know the fuel economy has gone down on the all-wheel drive model versus the front wheel drive uh, but overall you know good transmission decent amount of power um, it's not really punchy when you put your foot down uh, but you know with the two liter you do have a decent amount of power there's a slight delay in turbo lag as that builds up uh, but overall it's going to be plenty to merge on the highway things like that one of the other cool things they've done is with the front bumper. So for the all-wheel drive model versus the front-wheel drive model, they've raised it up 0.4 inches, uh, the vehicle as a whole, and then the front bumper, they've changed out so that it has a higher approach angle. So it's actually got an 11 degree higher approach angle with the all-wheel drive. It's about 29 degrees uh, versus the front-wheel drive. Uh, so if you are in off-road situations, you do have a better approach angle. And they've really pushed the wheels out to the front and to the back, which is helpful in off-road scenarios because you're you're not you know pushing the car into an obstacle first instead you get the wheels up on it uh, so overall you know a good package and it seems to be like it would be a decent thing off-road because they've got that locking uh, center differential which you can send all of the power to the rear uh, which is pretty incredible so thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below and nick thank you for uh, being an excellent driving partner and the small amounts of uh, chiming in here i appreciate it uh, no problem at all i'll just tell you now can we stop pull over i need to throw <laughs> sorry nick <laughs> we're gonna keep going